Hi, welcome to another ArcGIS tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to perform an unsupervised uh, image classification using ArcGIS. So as you might know there are two types of uh, image classifications that we can normally do. The first one is uh, an unsupervised image classification which is uh, normally calculated by the software or a supervised uh, image classification where a human will actually uh, do the guiding for the, uh, for the computer to do the classification. So today I'm going to show you how to perform an unsupervised image classification. So as you can see over here I have loaded up the image to my ArcGIS interface. And what I'm going to do in this tutorial is based on my knowledge of the area I'm going to uh, classify this image uh, using an unsupervised way. That means for example I'm aware of the fact that this part of the, the image uh, corresponds to a river and there are some forested areas and there are some uh, and there are some uncultivated lands which looks like uh, barren lands probably and also you can see some uh, agricultural areas so probably I'm going to have uh, and also we can notice some urban areas as well so probably by the end of this tutorial I might have around five classes uh, five classes of uh, land use so after you have loaded up your image you can simply right click over here and and activate the image classification panel now after that from the image classification panel you have to make sure that you have uh, selected your loaded up image over here and then go to classification over here and select ISO cluster unsupervised classification. Alright, so now in this window, uh, we have to define the number of classes that we need. So, since I already told that uh, I might have around five classes, so let's put five over here and simply click OK and let's observe what happens. Alright, now you can see that over here in the middle region where the river is supposed to be it's uh, classified as it's classified in green color but you can see that green color is actually present in so many other areas as well so if I deactivate this classified layer and if I look into these other areas where uh, where green color is present I actually do not expect for example these areas to be classified as water bodies but that's how the system has automatically classified this image. So this is actually one of the issues with uh, using unsupervised classification because we do not really have a control over defining the areas where which it should be water bodies and areas where it should be uh, agricultural areas and so on. So actually one way to get around this problem in unsupervised classification is to increase the number of classes. For example, if I repeat the same step and instead of putting five classes if I increase the number of classes to let's say 10 now you can see that the more the number of classes that you have the more accurate the unsupervised classification gets actually so now you can see that the river got actually classified in one color which is quite accurate uh, however, now we can see actually our classification is a bit too detailed now uh, because to my knowledge I can actually classify the region only to about uh, 5 classes but here we have around 10 classes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually sort of combine multiple classes together. So for example if I consider the river, you can see the river has been defined in orange color. So I'm going to actually change the color of the river to the universal color that we uh, use for water bodies which is blue. So now you can see I will assign the, the class number 3 for water bodies. And let's deactivate this layer and uh, let's have, have a look at these forested areas. Now what kind of colors have been assigned for these forested areas? So you can see actually the forested areas are sort of a mixture of uh, number 4. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, 
give a dark uh, dark green color for the forested areas. Sorry, it should be the fill color. Alright, now if I zoom into this uh, area which probably looks like an urban area, if I again activate my classified layer, you can see that sort of the rooftops are getting colored in this dark purple color. So I'm going to uh, prob probably change that color to be, let's say, red. And I'm going to assign that red color to be the color of the, the urban areas. And also there are some regions where it looks sort of like uh, barren lands over here. And I'm, I'm actually going to classify uh, urban areas and these open areas in one color. So if I just activate my layer, uh, activate my classified layer, you can see that those open barren lands are sort of getting classified in, in a in a lighter red color so I'm just going to actually assign the same color to to those uh, urban and open barren lands as well so now you can see that we still have a few colors to uh, deal with now if I if I zoom into this region you can see actually these areas are clearly a uh, these areas can be clearly classified as uh, agricultural areas. Looks like paddy fields to me. When I activate the layer again, I can clearly see that uh, in this case, the agricultural areas are also sort of getting classified as forested areas. So for the class number five, instead of actually classifying it as a uh, forested area, I'm going to probably use a lighter green color and I'll try to see what happens when I assign a different color so now you can see actually a majority of the of the lighter green colors are sort of getting attributed to the uh, to the agricultural areas and now when looking at the yellow color you can see that actually even the yellow color is mostly uh, has been classified over the agricultural areas so I'm also going to uh, sort of use the same color which I used for agricultural areas for the yellow color classification as well all right. If I zoom into these corners, and if I zoom into this corner, you can see that the, these dark forested areas are getting classified in purple color. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to actually assign the same color of the forest to these purple color uh, regions as well, which is the dark green color. All right. And the class number two, I'm going to classify that also as forest okay so so far you can see that class number one two class number one two and four are corresponding to forests class number three is for water bodies five and six is for agricultural areas nine and ten is for open areas open land and uh, urban areas and we still have to sort out uh, number 8 and number 7 so let's zoom into one part where number 7 is present and see from the real image what it actually is so to me actually the number 7 color which is the dark blue color also looks like uh, parts of uh, agricultural areas so what I'm going to do is I'm also going to actually assign the same color of agricultural areas to number 7 as well. And finally we are left with number 8. Which is sort of a lighter green color. Now I'll try to see what that number 8 would correspond to. Yes, to me actually number 8 also appears to be parts of the land cover which corresponds to probably the open areas or barren lands. So what I'm going to do is for this tutorial, just to keep things uh, simpler, I'm just going to assign the same color which corresponds to the open areas, roads and, uh, and urban areas. 
All right, now you can see that we sort of managed to classify our image into four different classes. So next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use uh, the re reclassify tool. And as the input raster, I'm just going to drag and drop my classified raster. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, take class number one, semicolon, class number two, semicolon, and class number four. And sort of group all these three different classes together, which happens to be the class of forest, forested areas. And the class number three is clearly going to be water bodies. I'm going to assign the value of two. Now, why do I not type, uh, let's say, water bodies or something like that over here? Because in this re reclassify option, we can only put integers over here. And for class number five, six, seven, I'm going to group them together. Five semicolon six semicolon seven. I'm going to assign that number three. That's the agricultural areas. And class number eight semicolon 9 semicolon 10 which is going to be urban areas and open land and that's going to be number 4 and make sure you use value as the reclass field over here and you can simply click OK alright now you can see that actually it got reclassified into the, the classes that we defined and I'm just going to deactivate this, the previously reclassified uh, raster. And the new one, you can now clearly see, has four different classes. So I'm going to, now if I go to the attributes table over here, you can see that it's still in the form of a raster. So I'm just going to go ahead and convert this raster into a polygon. You can go to your search panel over here and simply search raster to raster to polygon and you can use your reclassified raster as your input raster and the field you leave it as values and over here you check simplify polygons and click OK Alright, now after a while you'll be able to see that uh, we managed to create a polygon. Now if you go to the attributes table of this uh, reclassified polygon, you can see a few columns. You have the shape, ID, grid code, shape length, shape area. You can see over here that this grid code is actually coming from that this grid code is actually coming from the values of this raster this one two three four is actually corresponding to this these grid code values I'm also going to create a new column and assign what actually the, the property of this grid code is using a small Python script so in order to do that first you go to add field and create a new column and I'm going to name that column as land use or land cover type and that's going to be in text and click OK so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write this uh, a short Python script where it will automatically assign the real land cover type to this grid code. So before doing that I have to actually familiarize myself with uh, what, this, what, what each of these colors mean. So for example the number one is so for example number two I'm just going to again recolor this to be blue and number one which is uh, forested areas I'm going to color that in dark green and number three which is the agricultural areas I'm going to color that in light green and number four which is the ur urban areas I'm going to color that in probably
yeah brown color something like that now for the for the time being I'm going to leave this a particular polygon layer uh, unchecked. Now in order to write the Python script you have to go to the attributes table over here and just make sure that you are in the editor mode. You go to editor and start editing. Continue and then, and then you have to uh, click on this uh, land cover type column right click and go to and go to field calculator and in the field calculator and make sure that you have activated the parser to be python and also check the show code block so what i'm going to do over here is first in this prelogic script code i'm going to i'm going to define a function and in this space, I'm actually going to pass the uh, pass the argument directly. So first of all, let's see how to write the the prelogic script code. Now, now as you might know, Python is an indentation uh, sensitive language, so you have to specify. So whenever you write the if else commands, you have to specify the correct indentation. Now, in, it's it's easier to do it actually. Uh, in a code editor rather than doing it over here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and open idle which is the default IDE that we get when we install Python and I'm going to go file and new window and the way to define a function in Python is by using DEF I'm going to name this function as assign names and the name of my argument is going to be grid code and this grid code is actually coming from here this one because we are going to we are going to find different grid codes and we are going to assign different names based on the value of the grid code all right so you put a colon over here and then I'm going to pass a simple if else command. So if my grid code equals equals to one, I would like to return a, a string value of forest. else if my grid code is equal to 2 I would like to have a value of water bodies else if my grid code is uh, if my grid code is number three, I would like to return a value of agricultural areas. And finally, else means, or you could even define if my grid code is uh, equal to number four, then return a value of uh, urban areas. Keep it simple like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply copy this one, control C and paste it over here. Alright. And finally as my land use type, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call this function in this land use type. Whenever I need the 
argument for LC type. Just going to call this function. Now the way to call a function in Python is basically you copy this and paste it over here. Yes, as the grid code, you, I'm just going to simply double click over here. All right, uh, that's about it. Now let's click OK and see if this script works or not. Alright, now you can see that the script worked uh, quite successfully. Number one got assigned uh, forest, number two water bodies, number three agricultural areas and uh, number four urban areas as well. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to deactivate this, both of these rasters and now I'm going to activate this uh, polygon and go to properties and and go to symbology and I'm going to select the value field to be land cover type and probably select different color scheme and add the values now I'm just going to again uh, do some simple uh, color changes over here the water bodies again should be colored in blue the agricultural areas I think we can leave this color for the forested areas, I'm just going to assign a dark green and the urban areas I'm going to assign probably red color. So you can see that finally we have sort of an acceptable uh, type of a classification. Now it's true that this classification is by no means uh, a very perfect perfectly done uh, classification uh, that's why it's still called an unsupervised uh, classification and in the next video I'll explain to you how to do a supervised classification which is obviously going to be a bit more accurate than this because we are actually going to control the definition of the land cover type areas rather than letting the computer decide so thank you very much for watching this tutorial so if you have any further questions uh, you can comment them down below and I'll see you in the next one thank you